Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. It goes without saying that the mobile phone industry has evolved immensely in the past two decades. But along the way, there has been some interesting stories of catastrophic business failures and horrible phone designs. One such business failure lost its parent company $1 billion. The device that caused this loss was on the market for just two months. Another phone company failure saw its founder jailed for fraud. In this video, we'll take a look at some of these crazy stories and some other cell phone oddities. Hopefully this video will be a fun one for you guys. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. In 2011, rumors of an Amazon phone started circulating. Imagine if Amazon, one of the largest tech companies on earth, released a phone, a phone that was aggressively priced and had simple software. Android was relatively new at the time, and this new Amazon phone could pose a real threat to the iPhone and other Android phones. To add to this, CEO Jeff Bezos was deeply involved in this Amazon phone's development. The phone, which would eventually be called the Amazon Fire Phone, ended up costing $650, US about the same as other flagship phones. So what did you get for that? Well, there were no Google apps, and most of the Android apps didn't exist. It had unrefined software, poor battery life, and sluggish performance. The Fire Phone did have one unique feature though. Its five front-facing cameras could track your head and give you contextual 3D effects. The result is that the display could make it seem like things were popping out at you. There was also a button for identifying things in the real world and instantly getting Amazon to deliver it to you. But these features weren't useful enough to gain customers. It took just three months for Amazon to admit defeat and accept a $170 million loss. The Nokia N-Gage was a mobile phone that doubled as a handheld game console. Its design is instantly recognizable to millions, so you would think it was successful. Well, during its development, it seemed like it could be. Portable gaming was entering a new phase, with the Sony PlayStation Portable and Nintendo DS both coming out the next year. Unfortunately for Nokia, the N-Gage was neither good at gaming and it made a very awkward phone. The sales suffered because of this. In fact, Nokia were caught lying about the numbers. They claimed 400,000 units had been sold in the first two weeks. The true number, however, was around 6,000. But Nokia was counting the shipped units as sales. The ill-fated phone would be discontinued in 2005. Imagine being able to sell a full smartphone for only four US dollars. This is what the Indian company Ringing Bells tried to do with their Freedom 251 phone. In 2016, it was ranked the number one searched Android phone. The company made a huge promise, attracted tons of attention, and as a result, they earned a whole bunch of $4 pre-orders in India. But there was a problem. The company wanted the government to support them to a tune of $7.4 billion. So what was in it for the government? Well, the plan was to connect hundreds of millions of Indians to the online world through cheap smartphones that they otherwise couldn't afford. The Ringing Bells company stated that their true goal was to help empower Indian people. At the time, the Indian government was doing just that. They launched a project called Digital India. Its aim was to give cheap internet to the majority of the nation, so such a deal with the government wasn't unfeasible. But meanwhile, Ringing Bells was losing $13 per unit in production. The plan was to use advertising and in-app deals to make up the cost. But even with those deals, they were still going to lose $4 a unit. The grand reveal of the phone highlighted the reality. It turned out that the handset was actually an existing cheap Chinese phone manufactured by the brand Adcom. They had simply used whiteout marker to cover the Adcom branding. It's the Freedom 251, and it's called 251 because in India it costs 251 rupees, which comes to $3.70 here. But when you look closer at the facts around this phone, things start to get super shady, and it's clear something is not right. 
For starters, the company, Ringing Bells, says it's made in India but is in fact made in China. When the phone was unveiled at a press event, reporters were given sample phones that had the Chinese brand Adcom covered in whiteout. You can see the paint scratched off here in this video from the business newspaper Mint, in which the reporter also said she had trouble getting the review model to turn on. And photos from various news outlets all show icons on the home screen that look like they were ripped off from Apple's iPhone app icons. India's telecom ministry is investigating this company and how it could possibly sell a phone for so cheap. The government deal eventually fell through and the pre-orders were never fulfilled. Mohit Goel, who was spearheading the project, was arrested and charged with fraud. Some analysts have since called the phone a classic Ponzi scheme. The idea of a smartwatch has been around since the early 90s. But in 2004, the Korean firm Telson tried to push it all a step forward with the TWC 1150. It was truly something special. A vision of the year 3000 from 2004. The only thing was, it looked ridiculous to most people, and holding your wrist up to your head when receiving a phone call was less than intuitive, but props for the effort. Bang & Olsen is well known for their high-end audio, and in 2005, they teamed up with Samsung to launch their Serene phone. It was specifically designed to compete with high-end phones on the market, namely the top Nokias. It had an interesting design that included a power assistant hinge. And now that it's on, you'll be able to hear the mechanical aid of the, uh, the hinge there. also featured an iPod style scroll wheel and an LCD display. But due to its unfortunate design, taking photos was awkward because the camera was in the hinge. The device was a hard sell at $2,000. Unsurprisingly, it wasn't terribly popular, though I'm sure it's going to be a collector's item soon. In 2011, to stand out from the crowded field of Android phones, the Japanese firm Kyocera tried to think different with their Echo phone. The Echo featured a secondary and equal 3.5 inch screen that moved outwards on a hinge. Users could select two of seven apps to run simultaneously. They could also stretch out individual apps to cover both displays. Looking at this, they were close to the right idea, but the technology just wasn't ready. Up the top, like you would a normal smartphone. You can actually change the orientation too, so I'll just tilt it. You notice it works in both, both the viewing area styles, both portrait and landscape. And again, you'll see the speed at how fast this thing really moves. It's coming. Users ended up with slow, bulky hardware, a massive seam in the middle, and weak battery life from trying to power two screens. To add to this, the software of the apps was poorly optimized. Today, dual screen phones are making a comeback. So maybe this time around, Kyocera. Wouldn't it be cool if your phone could double as a widescreen projector? That was the plan for the 2012 Samsung Galaxy Beam. Yes, it was an Android phone with a built-in mini projector. I thought this would be the next big thing when I first saw it eight years ago. Engadget reviewers of the time said it was actually great for watching Netflix and other content in a dark room. Quote, At first, we couldn't think of many uses outside of a businessman using it for presentations, but it actually came in handier than we expected. I watch movies on the wall and the ceiling before falling asleep, a convenient option since the projector was larger than the TV I had laying around. To be honest, if a company could do this right, I actually still think it's a good idea. Unfortunately for Samsung, the Galaxy Beam ended up being a footnote in tech history. The company Red has a stellar reputation for its high quality camera equipment. In fact, the majority of Netflix shows are shot on RED cameras. So obviously, this company would be able to make a hit smartphone with a great camera. Well, that's what most people thought. But their phone, the RED Hydrogen 1, went in a strange direction. Its main selling point was a glasses-free, 3D holographic display. The phone didn't have much else going for it. Reviewers hated its dim display, bulky construction, and subpar camera performance. And at $1,300, it was a complete flop. 
and just two years later, you can get a brand new one for 300 US dollars. The company planned to release expandable add-on modules, but these never came and have even since disappeared from the company's promotional materials. Okay, so now we come to the biggest mobile phone failure of all time. In 2010, Microsoft was planning to do something different in the mobile space with their Kin phones. Manufactured by Sharp on behalf of Microsoft, these phones were targeted at social networking teens. Unfortunately, the promotional marketing came across as an old man pretending to be hip. This was the least of the Kin's problems though. The phone didn't have an app store, so it wasn't a real smartphone. But despite this, the social networking focus meant that buyers needed a data plan. This made it too expensive for its target market. But that wasn't all. The Kin phones ended up being slow, buggy, poorly built, and had a low resolution screen. Even Microsoft's San Francisco launch event felt half-hearted, as if the company knew it was making a mistake. Uh, good morning, everybody. This generation, let's call it the social generation, really does have a point of view. They think it, they do it, and they have a mantra for it. And so we, we try to categorize and understand their needs, and I think there's sort of three things that, that pop for us in a big way. And when we thought about that, we kind of came up with this, this concept of friends, friends, and friends. There was one thing about the kin that I thought was interesting, however. It featured a permanent green dot that stayed at the bottom of the interface. It behaved like a scrapbook where you could drop items like tweets, photos, messages, and other information to share with people. It was always there, so you didn't have to go into an app or dig into a menu to find something that you'd save for later. If modern smartphones had something similar, but not necessarily only for sharing, I think it would be a solid idea. But despite this, the Kin phones were a disaster. It only lasted 48 days on the market before Microsoft killed it. As it turned out, there were internal struggles between the Microsoft Kin team and the upcoming Windows Phone team. Ultimately, Microsoft didn't want this laggy phone to be associated with their upcoming Windows Phone 7 efforts. Windows Phone was another venture by Microsoft that was well executed but unfortunately also failed. In the end, the Microsoft Kin project lost the company over $1 billion in development costs. This makes it probably the most costly disaster in mobile history. And before we go, a couple of honorable mentions. Of course, the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 in 2016. We all know that story. A battery defect caused units to explode in users' pockets, and the phone was even banned on flight. The Nokia 7280. This 2005 phone was shaped like a tube and affectionately nicknamed the lipstick phone. It didn't have a dial pad and you had to enter numbers on an iPod-like scroll wheel. It was slow and tedious to use, a truly unique phone but too impractical to be a hit. I included these last two in the video because they're just insane. The C99 Star phone is a bizarre phone out of China from around 2009. The device was unquestionably unpractical. Pretty much, its main selling point was that it was shaped like a star. And finally, in the honorable mentions, the Golden Buddha Phone. The Golden Buddha Phone was another Chinese marvel, coming with a 24 karat gold exterior, interplanetary design, and a price tag 1,750 US dollars. It's safe to say that this is the craziest phone I've ever seen. So that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments section which phone stood out to you as the biggest disaster. If you did like this video and want to see anything on science, technology, business or history, feel free to subscribe to this channel. There's heaps of content on here. And if you want to see more throwback crazy phones, check out the Mr. Mobile series, When Phones Were Fun. I think he's doing a great job in covering some of those. So I'll leave a link for that in the description. Next week in the next episode, we'll take a deep dive into the recent Wirecard scandal, the biggest financial fraud in European history. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching. My name is Dagogo and you've been watching Cold Fusion and I'll catch you again soon for the next video. Cheers guys, have a good one.